President Trump is out there today defending his oldest son's attempt to get Russian dirt on Hillary Clinton. Also new reporting that Donald Trump Jr. could plead his Fifth Amendment right not to testify against himself on the grounds that it would incriminate him. Last night, we learned that the Senate Intelligence Committee, led by Republican Senator Richard Burr, had served the president's son with a subpoena. They want to question Trump Jr., among other things, about his meeting with Russians at Trump Tower in June of 2016, a meeting he took with the promise of negative Kremlin oppo on Hillary Clinton. But according to The New York Times, Trump Jr. was highly unlikely to appear before the panel in person. Three people close to him said, and one person said that he could invoke his Fifth Amendment rights in a written response. What's at issue here are unexplained differences between what Donald Trump told the Senate and what's contained in the Mueller report itself. Specifically, the committee wants to ask Donald Trump Jr. about his account of what he told his father about that Trump Tower meeting. In his 2017 testimony to the Senate Judiciary Committee, Trump Jr. said he did not inform his father about the meeting beforehand. The Mueller report shows that Michael Cohen said otherwise, recalling that Trump Jr. told his father that a meeting to obtain adverse information about Clinton was moving forward. While Cohen testified he did not remember if Russia was mentioned, he said it appeared that Trump Jr. had previously discussed the meeting with his father. And now the president's defending his son and his meeting with the Russians. The Mueller report came out and they said he did nothing wrong. The only thing is, it's oppo research. My son is a good person. My son testified for hours and hours. My son was totally exonerated by Mueller, who, frankly, does not like Donald Trump, me, this Donald Trump. And frankly, for my son, after being exonerated, to now get a subpoena to go again and speak again after close to 20 hours of telling everybody that would listen about a nothing meeting? Yeah, I'm pretty surprised. So should, should he fight that? Should he fight that subpoena? Well, we'll see what happens. I'm just very surprised. I really am by it. Really am. We're joining right now is U.S. Congressman Raja Krishnamurti from Illinois, who serves on the House Intelligence Committee. Jill Colvin's White House reporter for the Associated Press. David Korn, Washington Bureau Chief for Mother Jones. And Malcolm Nance is author of The Plot to Destroy Democracy. I have to go to the Congressman first about this because this is an amazing development. I mean, I shouldn't be saying this. A Republican mm -hmm. chairman of a committee, the Intelligence Committee of the Senate, is actually standing up to Trump, saying, we got a problem here. we got to talk to your son. This is not a partisan exercise. This is a Republican committee chair uh, in the Senate um, asking or issuing a subpoena to Ta Don Trump Jr. to come in and explain himself. There's clear contradictions in testimony uh, about uh, this very important meeting in the summer of 2016 at Trump Tower in New York City. And um, he's doing his duty. He's doing his job. He's doing the job of uh, trying to pursue uh, more evidence, more information, and his counterintelligence mission as well. Well, this is amazing. Malcolm, I want to talk to you. I'll get to you, on it, you know, everybody on this one. He's asking the son to come in to testify against the old man. Right. Because he says if he tells that the old man knew about that meeting to meet with uh, Vasilnyskaya, the Russian uh, representative of the Kremlin, up in the tower in June of 2016, and the old man said, I didn't know about it. Well, he said my father's a liar, and he's, a, he's part of this conspiracy. And that's right. And that's the question that I think Burr wants to discuss is in the counterintelligence component of the of the Mueller report. We haven't seen any of that. We don't know about the methodologies the Russians were using. And that might be what he's trying to suss out here. Did the Russians use these techniques to get to Donald Trump? And did Donald Trump actually finally, you know, add that the missing part of the game? This is, your, this is your line of country, the, yeah. the, the counterintelligence part of this, the fact the Russians were up to something. Yeah. We, our side, we're Americans, yeah. through the hands of the Trump people, yeah. played ball with them. That's exactly right. And, and we, we got to keep sight of what the big picture is here, because the Trump people keep saying over and over again, we got nothing out of this meeting. That's not the issue. The issue is they were told that the Russians wanted to help the Trump campaign. And what did they say? Donald Trump Jr. famously, I love it. This meeting was a signal, intentional or not, from the Trump campaign to the Russians, if you intervene in this election, we don't mind. So if Donald Trump Sr. knows about this, it implicates him in basically giving a green light to the Russians to do what you're going to do. This meeting happened a week before 
the Russians started leaking information they had stolen from the Democrats. A week before, they must have felt pretty good that they could get away with that. How important is this, Joe, to get to the truth about what the testimony of Donald Jr. about that meeting? I mean, and his father's knowledge beforehand? It's crucially important, but I think we, all, we also have to keep in mind here is that it's also illegal to lie to Congress. And this isn't the only example where there are inconsistencies between Don Jr.'s testimony and what was said in the Mueller report and testimony given in front of Senate committees. Not just this Trump Tower meeting, but also the extent to which Don Jr. discussed uh, the Moscow Trump Tower project in, in Moscow. Michael Cohen telling committees that, in fact, they talked about it much more frequently than Don Jr. admitted when he was speaking to the, you know, the, the House committee. Well, by standing firmly behind his subpoena, the president's son, Senator Burr of North Carolina, is defending Congress's right to fulfill its oversight responsibilities. The Washington Post reports that as negotiations over Trump Jr.'s testimony dragged on, Burr became increasingly frustrated and believed that Trump Jr. was defying the committee's authority. Trump allies are now di directing their attacks at Burr, of course, saying that a Republican shouldn't cross the president's family. What's this, the Romanoffs again? A, president a person close to Trump Jr. tells NBC News, catch this talk for, uh, well, for gangster talk. No lawyer would ever agree to allow their client to participate in what is obviously a PR stunt from a so-called Republican senator. Too cowardly to stand up to his boss, Mark Warner, and the re his boss is Mark Warner, and the rest of the resistance Democrats. And the These guys sound like thugs. Like characters out of a mobster movie. Several Republican lawmakers have also filed suit in questioning Burr's subpoena, including House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. Uh, Congressman, this gets to the thing I've wondered about. Well, I'm skeptical. Republican senators, Republican members of your House, are in fact elected officials of the first branch of government, the Congress. Why don't they stand up for the prerogatives and responsibilities of Congress to get to the truth with their oversight role? Why don't they have the integrity? Forget whose side they're on politically. They are on the side of the Congress when it comes to the Constitution. And they don't That's sit up. And finally, Byrd does this. And they treat him like he's, he's, he's to be shunned in some religious community. He should be shunned because he did this. That's exactly right, Chris. Um, I, I, I have to say that there's one other instance uh, where actually another Republican has actually called for more information, and that is actually Devin Nunes. Nunes and Schiff, the Chairman Schiff on my committee, together have asked for the counterintelligence findings uh, from the uh, Department of Justice because we are statutorily obligated to receive that information. So hopefully there are more Republicans like uh, Mr. Nunes and uh, Senator Burr who actually want us to perform our constitutional duty of oversight. At the end of the day, this is not partisan. This is about whether the president is accountable to anybody. And in this situation, I think Senator Burr is absolutely right. He needs to get to the bottom of what exactly happened uh, with regard to the conversation between Trump Jr. and his father. One issue with regard to counterintelligence I just want to point out, which is if it is a lie, what Don Jr. has been saying with regard to the conversation with his father, and the Russians know that, that in itself is called compromat. That is information yeah. that could be used uh, against Don Jr., who, by the way, is the head of the Trump organization, to get to his father. So this is something that's very serious. Malcolm, you're lying. Yeah, well, the Russians know all about that meeting, right? Natalia Veselnitskaya, she was an agent of the grant of the, uh, the essentially the attorney general of Russia and was sent there on a mission to see if the Trump team would bite at the, what they gave them. We still don't know whether they really bit in this, took it and used it. But you know what? Maybe Senator Burr is finally standing up for the Constitution. Maybe it's just one step too much to allow Donald Trump Jr. to get away with what he said before. And he wants to put him on the record and ensure that his committee is not being used as a tool by extension of Moscow. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.